Six people were stolen from the Nova Music Festival by Hamas on October 7th. Then, just as the IDF was close to rescuing them after almost a year of searching, they were executed. Sometimes we struggle to find the exact right words when horrible things happen. So with that said, I'm going to read part of an article Sam Harris wrote and posted on his Substack on September 3rd, 2024. His words reflect how I feel. As the war with Hamas nears its anniversary on October 7th, the killing of six hostages, including the American Hirsch Goldberg Pollen, has produced a crisis of confusion and recrimination within Israel. In this, these murders have served their intended purpose. However, understanding the larger goals of a jihadist organization like Hamas can offer moral and strategic clarity. In addition to spreading death and chaos, jihadists seek to destroy open societies by subverting their core values. Since October 7, 2023, Hamas has used our civilized concern for innocent human life, which it does not share, to divide Israel from the rest of the world and against itself. It has done this defensively by deploying its own non-combatants as human shields and offensively by taking hundreds of Israeli and international hostages. The result of this has been to drive decent people in opposing directions, turning some brutal in their willingness to sacrifice innocent Palestinian lives, while making others desperate to trade their own future security to win the release of men, women, and children who've been held captive in tunnels for nearly a year. Of course, the destruction of Gaza has been horrific, but the responsibility for all this misery and death rests with Hamas and those who support them. Yes, there is much to condemn on the margins. Israeli settlers and far-right ideologues are guilty of crimes and provocations. Benjamin Netanyahu is politically toxic. The IDF has made some spectacular errors of judgment. The Biden administration is spellbound by domestic politics and has become an unreliable ally and the theocratic belligerence of Iran casts a shadow over everything. There is much to blame, there is much blame to share, and many fertile sources of bad luck on the landscape. But we cannot, we cannot lose sight of two facts that have always been at the center of this conflict. One, Hamas wants to destroy Israel as a state and the Jews as a people. Consequently, any ceasefire or peace process negotiated with this jihadist regime will be temporary by definition. For Hamas, the purpose of peace is to gather the strength necessary to commit a future genocide. Two, Hamas remains popular among the Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. Precisely how popular remains an open question. Given these facts, the phrase two-state solution has no rational application to the current crisis. There will be no lasting peace until the Palestinians themselves repudiate jihadism. The real question is, what can be done to affect such a profound cultural change? And I will leave you with my own words and a question. So may the memories of the murdered be a blessing to us all in a way that, that truly allows us to see the truth, the truth of what's happening. And the real question I'll leave you with that you absolutely must answer for yourself is why don't these facts and faces unify us? Thank you very much for tuning in. Lots of love. See you guys next time. Cheers.